You're listening to The Ron and Don Show on the Ron and Don Radio Network, ronanddon.com. All right, look out now. Happy New Year's, you guys. Uh, we heard your plea. Now you got three. Three episodes of The Ron and Don Show as we head into 2020. That's all thanks to uh, Les Schwab. Live from the Les Schwab Studios, he's Ron, I'm Don. We're recording, actually, on New Year's Eve, and we're about to hit you over the head with a best-of episode of the Ron and Don Show. And, Ron, it's kind of interesting. You just posted something on your socials. It says 200,000 on it. What does 200,000 mean? Exactly? Yeah, 200,000 uh, plays of the Ron and Don Show in 2019, which is really great for me because there was a very real chance that that number could have been zero. You and I had talked about for a minute. It was like, hey, is our radio career over? Is this something where we just had our run and maybe we just do a, a left turn and we go into real estate and, and just do this other career? And we we really had to have a heart to heart and really had to look at why do we do this? Why is it important? What is it all about? Who is it for? And is this something where we want to basically buy our own little studio, set it up here in the Les Schwab studios between the, the, the scissor lift and the tire rotation machine where they just shoehorned us in here. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, do we want to do that? And for a while it was, it was up in the air. Yeah. Here we are installed number three at the Les Schwab studios in uh, Ballard. So thanks to those guys. <laughs> we appreciate that. Uh, anyway, Anyway, we've kind of put together a best of for you, and these are just some things that just kind of made us laugh and made us think over 2019. And Ron, I think it all started uh, with some hot candy, didn't it? I have gotten more response, I think, in the over the 20 years we've been doing radio over my hot candy story, and uh, it is something that I to this day. Uh, people are just walk by me, and I don't know who they are, and they just go, hot candy. Yeah. Ron went to a massage parlor. It turned into some hot candy, and uh, we'll talk about that. Also, uh, I got a little puppy this year. My son and I, in fact, uh, last Christmas, and we were taking little Charlie out on Queen Anne Mountain, and the next thing you know, other dogs are coming over. They're mounting. They're looking. They're doing various things to our dog. My dog was basically being raped in public by other dogs. <laughs> it's very disturbing to me. And we had a discussion about what are you supposed to do when another what, what dog? What are the rules? Yeah, when another dog owner comes along and they're letting their dog do anything they want to to your dog. What are you supposed to say to that dog owner? So we ended up having a great discussion about that. Uh, also, I revealed this year why I really, really stopped drinking. And I also got a vampire facial that I know we're going to talk about a little bit later, too. But to kind of start things off, this is kind of interesting. Uh, what about two men? Two men hugging each other before they start their radio program. This is Ron and I just a couple months ago. All right, we're going to do something kind of weird, and I just I want you to go with me on this, okay? So I I just read some research, and I think it's going to help our relationship, and I've been trying this with my son to see if I can help with that relationship. Because sometimes when you're nine years old, you're trying to kind of disconnect from your parents, and you're starting to connect with friends and all that other stuff, which I actually think is healthy and good. Uh, At the same time, they said that we should still be hugging our kids, but there's a certain way that we should be hugging our kids. So I want you to come over here. Oh, boy. And you're going to play the part of uh, my son. So come on over real quick, if you Are would. Are you going to hug me? So, right. What's that? Are you going to hug come me? On, just come over here. Uh. Just I, I can't tell you. I didn't send you the article. And the reason I didn't want to send you the article is because I didn't want you to know what's going on here. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this you- is very uncomfortable. I'm going to give you a hug. Just uh, So we're going to be a real hug. It's just you, you and you and I in the house right ah, now. I'm gonna what, give you for a, what reason? I'm gonna give you a hug. For I what wa- reason? I want you to mentally count to three and just tell me when you're done. All right? Tell me when I'm done with the hug. With the three. When oh. you're at, when you're at three, one, two, and just say you're done. All right? All right. And, and then, I can count very fast. And then, and then tell me how you feel. Okay. But tell me how you really feel. All right. You promise. This is really right, come weird. In, come come Take here. Take your glasses off. If you're gonna cry, you're gonna crush okay. your glasses. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a good hug. Are, All you, right. are you ready? All right, come here. Oh boy. All right, now, now count to three, and then tell me how you feel. All right, I've, I've counted to three. Yeah. How how do you, how do you, we're not done yet though. Ah. Yeah. How do you how do you feel with the three second hug? How was that for you? Awkward. Okay, what else, though? What else would you uh, do? You're warmer than I am. Did you work out this morning? Yeah, I did. I, I right. went for a trail run today. Because I have to turn the heater off in my house or it's really loud, so okay. it's cold in here. Okay, so, so, so it's awkward, but... Awkward, but warm. Warmer. Did you enjoy anything about it? Uh, it was fine. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It, 
it's okay. not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Go one more time. One more time. All right. One more time. I'm throw a little science at you. And again, this is the reason okay. why. This is so weird. I didn't send you the science. So so now we're going to go. Come here. We're going to go. All from, right. I'm going to get you in a hug, and then I'm okay. going to tell you. And don't say anything. All right. And I want you to just mentally enjoy this hug. We're going to go 20 seconds. All right. Wow. So you have to count yourself 20. And then immediately, I want you to tell me what you feel. I want Am you I be, supposed to hug back? I want you to be on. No, no. Hug, just, let right. me, just let me just, hug you. Be like a, you know a, a rag doll. Do you feel like hugging back? No. If you I feel, feel like hugging no. back, hug back. No. You don't want to hug back. All right. Not really. You ready? Okay. All right. Here, here we go. All right. Count to 20. Uh, three, two, one, go. Your headphones jamming into my ear. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not counting. You're about 10. Okay. You always run this hot? 19, and that's that. That's 20. Okay. Now how you feel? You might have a metabolism problem. You're like 106 degrees. Okay. How, how do, so, so sit over there. Over. I want you to be super honest, though. I want you to be super honest and talk a little bit about your feelings and how you feel. And what was it like being hugged for three seconds by somebody you know that loves and cares about you? Because you know I love and care about you. And then, and then the twenty second hug. How did the twenty second hug feel? I mean, it was fine. Like seriously, you're really hot. Yeah. Like uh, abnormally hot. Are you sick right now? No, I'm not sick. Okay, because that that was alarming of how okay. hot you so were. You're, so you're so that was distracting. One, so number one, the hug was alarming. It was distracting it's of distracting. how warm your body temperature. Okay, is. Okay, what else? Um. It's it was an artificial um, scenario. Yeah, there have been times in in my life and your life when there was a legitimate reason to have a hug. Okay, and in those moments, it felt more natural and okay. good. Yeah, uh, but like in that scenario, it felt really awkward. <laughs> it did. Your headphone was jamming into my ear. Yeah, you were overly hot. Okay. I knew we were recording, right. so I couldn't really get into the flow state you of just enjoying the hug. We were the only ones here. What if Charlie the dog walked in? You're probably concerned about that, right? Uh, not the dog, but it was just... No, I, I get... So what, what does the science say, There's I guess? new research out, and it says, on average, we all hug. When we hug somebody, we do it in an insincere fashion. Right. We're looking for the other person to hug back, and when we, they don't hug back, we get insecure about it, and we pull out after two to three seconds, and we're done. And they say there's a lot of good science to back the fact that if we will hug each other, if you will hug other humans, you have that human-to-human -human contact, and you'll do that for at least 20 seconds and get past the awkwardness of 20 seconds. And I'm talking about doing this with your kiddos. I'm talking about doing this with your spouse, your partner, your grandfather, whoever it is. Uh, probably not your workmates. You might get in some trouble there. Uh, but I don't know. Some people, some some people at work, they like to hug. They have a yeah, hug. I don't know work. if I do it twenty seconds. Yeah. So nonetheless, they say after twenty seconds, it releases a lot of pos positive endorphins uh, in your body, and it should make you feel pretty good for the next couple hours. And it also should make you feel like not only do you want to receive those kind of hugs, but you want to turn around and you want to share those kind of hugs with other people. So again, the research saying we hug in our culture. But we're just not hugging long enough, and we should really spend some time lingering. Think about this. You travel overseas, and you'll see men sometimes, right? Grown men that that aren't necessarily gay, that are holding hands, that are hugging, yeah, that are taking naps that is true. Uh, on each other's chest. They're very, very comfortable uh, with hugging and showing affection. Sometimes more comfortable showing affection to other men than they are in public actually showing affection to women. Well, if you're comfortable with this thing, you should try. There, There's a, a deal out. It's called 36 Questions to uh, Fall in Love with oh, a wow. Romantic Partner. Okay. The last item on the 36 Questions is that you sit face-to-face -face with a, a romantic partner okay. and you look into their eyes yeah. for four minutes. Okay. You set your iPhone for four minutes. Okay. You can't say anything. You can't. There's no touching. Okay. You're just supposed to gaze into their eyes. Gaze into their eyes. For four minutes. For four minutes. It starts out as funny. Okay. And then it becomes terrifying. Oh, it does. And then you you go through the terror, and then it, you come out the other side. It is... Try it. What, it, it what, if you what, have what, a romantic what, partner... What happens on the other side of terror? Try it. it, it uh, you, you feel seen. Okay. And you see somebody... 
Oh, you do? After you get out of your own way. What does that mean? Because uh, you hear that in cognitive therapy a lot. You feel seen and get out of your own way. and, and Well, because you're so you're feeling concerned. Hurt, like, feeling hurt. It and takes you probably two and a half, three minutes to get out of your own way. Okay. And then you really are just looking at the other person. What did you see? Um, I, I saw someone that left and never called me back. Okay. <laughs> really? No, no, I'm kidding. But um, it's you, you have to be in a, in a it's sort of a romantic. I mean, we could probably do it. Okay, it would be a different deal. I don't want to do it right now. Why not? Because it would be four minutes of silence. Yeah, which would be bad for uh, podcast purposes. <laughs> but uh, I'm up for it. Look at just do a Google search for 36 questions. Okay, it's really fascinating. What would some of the other questions be? Uh, I forget, but it was developed by uh, psychologists that take yeah. you through three blocks of 12 questions. Okay, and they they uh, are. Geared Geared towards intimacy. So by the time you get to that last set of 12 questions, yeah. uh, if you're being honest and doing it, uh, it will be a very intimate conversation. And then you look at each other for four minutes. It's it's a remarkable. It sounds Do you get up the cheesy? next day and hire attorneys? Because now you're like, okay, now we're getting a divorce. This <laughs> exactly. Go Could, it go exactly. That? Could it go that way? Um, possibly. Yeah. But if you're doing it with an open heart. Uh, it's a remarkable exercise. Really? It's more remarkable than the 20-second hug. It is. So just Google it. Google it. 36 questions. Okay. If you have someone that you're romantically involved with, go through it. Or someone that you really like, uh-huh. uh, go through it. And then tell me what it's like to do that four-minute deal at the end. Okay. It was it was terrifying, self-conscious, and then pretty interesting. Okay. I'm going to try this with Charlie the dog and see how that works. I think Charlie would win, probably. Yeah. Anyway. How's that hug? So, my, my back is still sweaty where your hand was. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it much either. I thought I'd enjoy it. More. And I didn't. That's because I wasn't allowed to hug back. You want to do it again? No, we'll I don't want to be hugging. I think. No. That was weird. There's no one in the house. Just you and I. Oh, the microphones. Two turntables and a microphone. Hey, it's Ron here with Rich Ballman. Rich, this is a treacherous time of the year to drive. And you might be going, oh, I'm going to head over to eastern Washington. I'm going to head over to Idaho. You need to just bring the car in, get it checked out at Les Schwab. It's free. It sure is, Ron. You know, we offer the free pre-trip safety check at any point in time. And we're going to remove the tires for you. Uh, of course, look at the uh, look at the brakes and give you uh, just an honest estimation of what's remaining uh, uh, in brake material. Look at your tires. Make sure that they're in good condition. If they need to be rotated, we'll go ahead and do that at that time. We wouldn't charge anything for you to rotate the tires while we have them off. Uh, go ahead and check the air. Of course, you know, in the winter, uh, as, as the temperatures go down, uh, those darn TPMS sensors that are in our tires nowadays, you know, uh, they, they, the lights tends to start coming on on the dash, and so we encourage people, if that happens, just drop by. We'll check your air for you for free. But uh, we'd love to have you come in and see us to get ready for winter. Uh, make sure that you're up to speed and that when we get that incremental weather, sometimes a little snow, that uh, you're ready to go. Yeah, and sometimes it's the peace of mind of knowing, okay, I checked this out, I'm good to go, and it just lets you have some confidence when you're going to hit the passes. So thanks a bunch. Head out to Les Schwab. There's 85 stores to uh, to serve you. Head in and just say, Ron and Don told me I could get my free inspection to get ready for winter. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. All right, don't forget the Ron and Don Show. Go to ronanddon.com. You'll see the radio show. And then also we're licensed brokers, licensed real estate brokers. If you need help with the biggest transaction of your life, buying or selling, Ron Upshaw at windermere.com, Don O'Neill at windermere.com. And if you just want to talk real estate with us, we'd love to talk to you. I talk a lot about investment properties, first-time buyers. Ron, what do you like chatting with folks about? I, it seems like I've been, or people have been gravitating to me that are like going through major life transitions. Yeah, tell me about that a little bit. Uh, it's interesting. Um, like a lot of I've talked about on this uh, show that uh, I, of course, am divorced. Hold on, Charlie's pulling on the table. Charlie! Come here. <laughs> Sorry, he's not fixed yet, and he's 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 humping everything, including your equipment. So, right. Sorry, but no, that didn't sound right. <laughs> the radio equipment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, he's humping everything. Can I ask you? And then I want to come back. Can I ask? Sure. You, let me ask you a quick question. We were out on the boulevard the other day, and I'm supposed to walk him every night for him to socialize with other dogs. Right. He's turning eight months. You're supposed to wait a year now in order to have dogs fixed. And the reason is it has to do with their joints. 
and it also also has to do with just their maturity. Right. And I don't know if we can wait. I, I don't know if we can wait. There are, are people that are just more dog people than I am. And they're like, they're dog, they're like in love, they like, they, their dog does things and they don't, it, it doesn't bother them. And what their dog is doing with my dog really bothers me. And so I'm sitting there the too, other too day. Too affectionate? I'm sitting there the other day and I'm sitting outside a coffee shop. And what I try to do, and, and I just read this in a book, is in order for him to socialize, when people walk by with their dogs, typically they'll ask, is it okay to say hello? Or other people that are dog people will say, is it okay to say say hello? And I keep my a foot on a, on a leash so he doesn't jump up on, on people and he appears to be well-behaved. Anyway, this, this, this gal comes by and she works at a local spa and she's handing out cards and she wants to know if I'd like to come by the spa. And she has a dog. And her dog is a young, young uh, uh, male too. And anyway, these dogs start they're, 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 they start doing something that you it was really uh, uncomfortable for me to watch these two male dogs doing. And I, I know we're on a podcast, and I could say it, but I just I, I it in. And it's not humping. It was something completely. I, I have an idea what's going on. Something compl- and it was going. It was happening and happening. So I'm like <laughs> Charlie, and then she's not scolding her dog, and I didn't feel like I could scold her dog. And I just feel at some point she's gonna she is gonna move along, and she is not moving along, and is, she is striking up and now wanting to have a conversation with me, and almost like Wait, doing. You're an not interview. pulling your dog off. What's that? You're not just pulling the dog off. Well. Charlie is now not doing that, but now her dog is all over my dog and putting on a hell of a show. Yeah, you I mean, just and, and 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 I'm like, I need her to go away now because it is causing a scene. It is making me uncomfortable. And she had, she had no problem with what her dog was doing to my dog, and my dog was now trying to do in return. So what do you? What do you? Yeah, ask them what to do you, control their dog. You do? Yes. You do? Yes. This is uh, not open season. It was. No, you got to like either if you like pull your dog off. It was like pornography for dogs. Right. It was crazy. If you pull your dog off and they're not doing your dog, just say, ma'am, can you get your dog back? Like I'm trying to train my dog. Or oh, my you dog. do? Okay. Yes, you absolutely. Do. I'm trying to train my dog. Yes, I'm. I'm my okay. dog's in a training regimen. I didn't know what to and say. And just like, can you pull your dog off? Okay. So like we're learning, we're in dog school right now and this is not part of the training. So like, can you okay. please, you okay. know, okay. back off from my dog because that that is odd you're, i under i know exactly what you're talking about you know about. what i'm talking about yeah I, mean, I was i didn't want your dog offend, is unfixed i, I get wanna, it i didn't want to offend just her. say my, we're in we're in training okay you, can you like uh, you. training to be a service dog training you can't we can't yeah. do this okay you're, you're you're messing up the training yeah and so like or, you know, i didn't even you. know my dog would engage in that well, there's you know, kids. I, yeah, that's fine. Dogs don't care. It wasn't that it's, fine it, for me. Yeah, like, I know I, it's not fine for you. It, it doesn't mean the same thing that you think it means. Why, 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 I wonder why she was so comfortable with it. She's she was just, just oblivious. Okay. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Because mo- most, most people know to kind of move on or thanks for the saying dog hello. dog thing is so weird. And they wait about 30 to 60 seconds. And dog park people, man, are different. I, I went to, we went to a dog park twice. I am not a dog park person, and we're not going to go into it right now. Why? But dog park people are... Get used to that, man. That's, That's a, this is I, the, no, because I'm not a dog. We we we. You're not we, going to dog park anymore. Never, never. That's we are fine. Out, we are out. You're we're a dog trail person. We are we are dog trail. We are not dog park. So. Hey, I don't know if this happened to you. Happened to me the other day. I jump in my truck. I have a Forerunner. It's real wheel drive, and it used to be when I had these old tires on it. In fact, the tires that came from the Toyota manufacturer, the truck would spin out all the time, and I had a hard time controlling the truck. Well, what I did is I went to Les Schwab, and they put on some brand new tires. They have their own tire line now, and I'm telling you, it has made a world of difference in the way that my truck performs. I no longer have to put it in four wheel drive, but it gets rainy out and i used to have to do that with the other tires so if you're looking for some brand new tires and you want to make sure that these tires are going to perform when it rains out or when you're heading up to the pass and all the snow and everything else what you want to do is you want to stop stop by a les schwab tire center and say hey let me look at the custom les schwab tires in the les schwab tire line all right yeah you can be a part of something really, really incredible too because Les Schwab right now has a big toy drive going on. We want to make sure that every child in Western Washington gets a toy for the holidays. LesSchwab.com. Find one of those locations near you. Just go to LesSchwab.com and don't forget Les Schwab doing the right thing. You know it matters.
Ready for a great 2020? Take Ron and Don with you. Just hit subscribe and get the show delivered to you every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Ron and Don Show. Thanks for listening, you guys. Over 200,000 spins in just the last couple months. That is unbelievable. This is episode 45. We appreciate when you subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. If you can go out to your favorite podcast player, hit the subscribe button, give us a rating. Uh, I think um, close to 1,000 people have given us a rating on uh, Apple iTunes, and it's over four stars, which is great. It is. So uh, we appreciate that. And I also appreciate the guy that gave us one star. He just seems a little bitter. He's a little angry. <laughs> but you know what? If you want to take it out on our Apple review, I, I understand. We had over 800 reviews, I think, and you read the one star review. I love it. I that. had to go <laughs> down to the one star because it was like 0.8% one star. Like, all right, they're usually entertaining. Okay. The guy's like, hey, there's, there's uh, you know, whatever. He's okay. Well, he's a little better. Did you take it personally? No. Oh, that's like, we bad. always give one star. There's always a guy that's going to give you one star. I know. Man. Always. My Airbnbs always get a little one yeah, star. One dude. star. Nothing you do about that. Hey, uh, straight ahead on the best of 2019 as we head toward 2020, uh, Ron walked into a massage parlor uh, this year, and he didn't think it was that kind of massage parlor. And then he found out, wow, maybe it is. He needed a massage. Maybe this is a, that kind of massage parlor when someone started whispering in his ear, hot candy. <laughs> I should make hot candy t-shirts. <laughs> that is funny. Everybody asked me about it. I went over to Jim Brown's house for Christmas, uh, my friend who's the Olympia firefighter, and they were asking about hot candy. So uh, that's straight ahead. Also, the real reason uh, why I stopped drinking a couple of years ago. I'll share the real reason uh, with you. And, well, do we want to get into this right now? I guess we do. Uh, have you have you had any work done? Any any work done? No. On your, I've never had any I work have, done. I have a cap tooth. Yeah, yeah. Any work done on your face? This year, I had some work done on my face. I got a vampire facial, and uh, here's Ron and Don to tell you more. Uh-oh. Stop the show. I don't know if there's a delicate way to say this. Yeah. Because we haven't seen each other a lot lately. You've been working. I've been working. Right. What happened to your face? Are you joking? You're, you're. No, I'm just in a, from a friend to a friend. Like, what is going no, on? Why couldn't you ask me that off? Why, why, why? Well, you, why, I, why save I, I, that for off the show I when have, I can do it on the show? I have been here now for about thirty minutes, and we are sitting here. Sharing what a happened? Tall glass of lemonade. What? 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 What happened? Well, my friend called me the other day. My friend Liz called me. Should we describe the condition of your face she, first? She is. Uh, she's a badass. She's in the Air Force. She was a nurse. She's a great runner. She Did you get is, run over by a jet plane. What, what's that? Did you get a jet plane backwash into your face. I can't believe you're doing this to me right now. Any, anyway, she's a mountaineer. She's all these great things, and then also. Also, she's a nurse practitioner, and she works at a local uh, skin clinic. And so she okay. called me the other day, and she said, "Hey, why?" And I, and and I, I, she called me the other day. She said, "Why don't you come down?" And I thought it was called a pirate facial. And I don't know if you know what a pirate facial is, but I can't. I I got the name of it wrong. It's not a pirate facial. If you look online at what a pirate facial is, it's something that you and I are not going to talk about on this oh, podcast. Oh, it's just uh, <laughs> but, one of those words. But if this was like the Playboy podcast or something, then we would have a lot to say okay, so about not- what a pirate facial is. So I've been telling everybody, hey, I'm going to see my friend Liz. I'm getting a pirate facial. And I was like, really? Yeah, and everyone's kind of looking at me going, oh, and I thought I thought it was a really cool thing to go get a pirate facial. Like maybe it is in so some I, circles. So I- <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to my Google machine in yeah. private so privacy I, mode. I, I've been telling all my friends I get a pirate facial, and was the, the the reaction I was getting was not very supportive. And then I told them I said, "Well, I have all that. I'm trying to get them to feel sorry for me." So I'm like, "Okay, well, I have all these acne scars since I was a kid, and it looks like I shaved my. Fa- and you know this. It looks like every. It looks like I shaved my face when you I was a I, cheese grater when I was 15. I have scars all over. I know, the but since you since you turned like uh, 35 plus, it's just been rugged. Is that it? Yeah, after when okay. we were younger, like, like the Winston man, and, and you the, old, had, the old cigarette commercials. This, yeah. uh, do do I need to tell the Accutane stories? No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, because yeah. that was a weird period. Yeah. So life. so and so anyway. So what is this supposed to do? So well, so I went in and they they first of all they take out some blood and then what? They, they tell you this is, blood? this is your own blood and they tell you it's not going to hurt at all and then they a start, woman at the facial clinic yeah. is taking drawing blood. She's a nurse practitioner, so uh, it's my friend Liz. So she took she takes the blood out and, and she's. What is she doing? She's been doing this like 11 or 12 years, but I think this is, and, and this is like a $1,250 procedure. What is it actually called? That she's doing on me. A well, blood facial? I find it's a vampire. 
A it's vampire. A, it's a vampire facial. Ah. Yeah. And you would think. I think I've seen the Kardashians do you this. You probably wouldn't want to. You, well, from what I've read, I wouldn't personally want a vampire face, uh, 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 a, a pirate facial. The vampire facial, though, is, is it's supposed to be great, exfoliate your skin. But With you have your to own be, blood? Evidently, well, I I didn't quite understand what was good. So they take the blood and then they spin it, kind of like uh, Lance Sector Armstrong Fuge. would get his blood spun when uh, a lot of these guys would do the tours. My and all mom's that. a medical technologist. She's going to separate the platelets from the uh, yeah. the, the blood. So, so then they tell you it's not going to hurt, which means you know it's going to hurt. And then they numb your face, and then your lips go numb. Which everything, part do they put on your face? The, I don't know. The but white blood cells or the red it, blood cells? They're rubbing something in your face, and everything's numb. And they tell you it's not going to hurt, and then you're saying, "Well, why are you telling me it's not? If it's not going to hurt, why are you putting all this numbing cream on on my face?" And then they pull out something, and it just it, and it sounds like a saw, kind of a saw drill sound. And then it's and like then, a tattoo needle. Then they hand you a fan. So in one hand you have a fan, in the other hand you have a ball that you can grip. And I'm like. Liz, I thought this wasn't going to hurt. You told me this wasn't going to Why do I have a fan in one hand? And why do I have a, a ball? Stress ball. Yeah, a, a strut to hang on it. So she starts doing this. And oh my gosh, it's it's it, it's like she's Start taking, doing what? It's like a pile driver to, to your with face. With your own blood in there? Yeah, with your own blood. And it's going it's going in and out of your what face. She, in and out. Is it supposed out. to like fill the just, scar in with your own blood? It's just pounding. It's just... It, 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 All over your face. Pound, yeah, your whole face gets pounded. And, and again... Not in a pirate way. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> not in a pirate. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not on Trista Radio anymore. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> We'd have to go to break. <laughs> so let me get this straight. So, you're, so I didn't mean it. It, it, it. I don't know what else to say. It's you've it, got a machine. Your face gets pounded. It's it injecting does. your own face with your own blood. I think that's what it's doing. And then yeah. what's it supposed to do? Did it take the the acne scar away? I'm not sure, but it hurts like hell. And you, and I was told that it wasn't. And you paid twelve hundred fifty dollars for this? Well, I, I I didn't. I didn't. I I was I was a guinea pig, and when I got all done, it looked like an actual guinea pig. And I have the face. I have the fan turned up as high as it'll go. I'm gripping that ball. My face is getting pounded with this facial. And then and then she goes into your neck. She has the whole neck, and then the see the forehead is crazy right now, and then into the nose and into all. The, so so, are, so then I think it's done. Are you happy with this? Then I think it's all. And then we're done, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like so relieved. And then she comes out with these huge needles, and I said, well, "What are you doing?" She says, "Well, now we're gonna inject your blood." And I'm like, "I thought that's just what we were doing." No, no, no. Now they have to take oh. these needles, and now she's injecting my blood back into my face. So there's the vampire. Uh, part of the facial. I don't get what it's supposed to do. So then I think we're done. And she's like, you know what? You look like a very angry person. She said, you... You just shoved needles in my yeah, face. Yeah. Do do I, look, do, I, do I look angry? Do, do I seem like... Do I do I have a look of an angry... I think I yes. do. Yes. Your face is red, but not in a sunburn kind of way. No, I think I look like angry. Like an agitated way. I think way. even when I'm... Ha like when I go for a run or something or when I'm out... People have told you me You have before, a resting aggression face. Is that what I have? Yes, absolutely. Is that what it is? It's a resting aggressive face. A resting aggressive face. Yes. Really? Yes. Is that good? It rests in a rugged, or in a rugged yeah, way, yeah, a little bit. Well, now really? it's in a it's in a vampire pirate kind of way. No, I was looking at your face today, and you seem very blissful and happy. Like we were. In I a, sometimes have a. Uh, we we're in a meeting at Windermere, and you're 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 you. you, you I try to be resting engaged. Yeah, that's what I was going. I think for. you are resting engaged. You are resting and uh, aggressive. Am I? It's not sad though. No, it's not sad. It's okay. like I'll, I'll uh, so it's still kind of cool. I'll rip this needle out of your head. Oh, okay, I'm I'm fine with that. Shove I, it in your ear canal. Because I would. So <laughs> it, so we get all, and I think we're done. And she's like, No, no, no. I gotta, I gotta. I'm gonna have you. You look, you look mean. So now I'm gonna have to Botox you. So now, did you so, get Botox up here? Yeah, this is Botoxed up here. Wow. I don't know what the, anything that's. Is she, it, it just right. I don't know what it does, but evidently. Did she just get out of Botox school? About, and you're... No, no, she's been doing this over day. And evidently, about five, six weeks from now, I am going to look hotter than hell. You're a little... Hotter than hell. You're a little and, and puffy and you're a right little now, pink right now. I am a little. Yeah. yeah. It's like the pig at the county fair. Hotter than hell. And I won't have the resting aggressive face anymore. I don't know we'll what my face, face will be. <laughs> and then six months from now, six months from now, all this great work that's been done, it all goes down. And you got to do it again. And then I have to do it all over again. Yeah. Anyway. 
It's the Ron and Don Show. We're just getting started with resting aggressive faces. Only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Two years ago, I, I made a decision to stop drinking, and I have never really shared until uh, this year and a couple weeks ago uh, why I quit. There's a phone call I made, and it's a phone call I'm not proud of, uh, but I decided to go ahead and share it uh, because I thought maybe it could help somebody out there who has struggled in the same way that I have, who has struggled in the same way that my family has, my father, my grandfather, all the O'Neills. Uh, we have struggled uh, with drinking and addiction in our lives. Uh, so I decided uh, to share my story this year. Uh, and in sharing my story, I also had to share uh, some of my failures. Because in deciding to not drink, uh, there were four times where I did. But there were also hundreds of days uh, where I didn't. So anyway, this is my story. And uh, it's a story about two phone calls. And uh, I want to share it with you now. All right, I want you to think about this feeling. Uh, and Ron, I'm going to ask you about this feeling in a, in a minute. I want you to explore this with me. The feeling of, of anger. Um, and sometimes righteous anger. Do we have the right to be angry about something? And sometimes we do. And anger is a real emotion. But anger is also, I'm learning, tethered to other things like anxiety. And anger can be tethered to sadness. And anger can be tethered to getting stuck. And anger can also really be tethered to never becoming the person that you want to become. And for a lot of people, sometimes anger can be directly linked uh, to depression. So this time of year is hard for me. And one of the reasons it is hard for me, and I, I haven't shared this before, and I'll just share this. Uh, my little sister passed away. It'll be five years ago now, uh, next year, early next year. Uh, she was a music minister in a church. And Ron, you knew her. You were, you were, I went to second grade with her. Yeah, you were best friends with my little sister, Colleen. And uh, we used to play in a little band together. And she ended up marrying the guitar player uh, because you were the singer. Nobody ever marries no, the Nobody singer. ever marries a singer. Nobody ever marries a singer. Yeah, so. we like literally had homeroom together in yeah. second grade, and that's when I, yeah. I met your whole family and, and we're friends ever since. Very, very dear friend. Yeah, this was her favorite time of year, and she would put on this the Christmas play with her whole family, and they'd get involved. She died a number of years ago of ALS right after Christmas, and so this time of year, I really, really think about uh, Colleen, and I really miss her, and I bet for you, there are people that you miss this time of year, too. Believe it or not, I have some great Christmas memories of my father. And even though my father left when I was young, I, I think of him and I miss him. I miss my grandpa, Charlie. I miss my uh, grandma, Caroline. I, I miss them. And at the same time, I really tried to just be focused on the connections I have in my family now. This time last year, on Christmas Day, uh, I was with my mother. I was with her husband, Stanley. We were with my son. And we were providing hospice care for Stanley, and he would die uh, a couple weeks later after Christmas. So I think about that, and at the same time, not in a sad way, uh, in a good way, because I was glad that my son and I were able to be there for Grandpa Stanley, and we were able to be there uh, for my mom. So anyway, um, I spent a lot of time as we're heading into 2020 uh, reflecting. Have you been thinking about reflections uh, at all? Uh, a little bit. Like I have a memorial coming up in, in Oakland, California uh, between Christmas and New Year's that I'm going to be heading down for. My, my birth mother died earlier this year and they, for some, I don't really know why, but they postponed the memorial till now. And so doing some re reflecting on that. I'm, I'm trying to keep it uh, in a festive mood though. To be honest, I'm like deliberately trying to be festive because I know this is going to be sad. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I've been sort of keeping it at bay until I actually get there in person. Yeah. What do you do, what do, you do with, the, with the emotion of anger? And then I'll, I'll tell you 
uh, briefly what happened a couple Saturdays ago that got me so angry. What do you What do you do with that emotion? Uh, it, lately, I've just been trying to lean into stuff when things when things happen where I get a rise where, in whatever emotion is to lean lean into it instead, and then most of the time it dissipates faster for me if I just lean into it than if it just sort of acknowledge it and go, wow. I try to pay attention to the physical sensation. So what I notice is when I get angry, the back of my neck heats up uh, and I clench my fists and my shoulders go up. So when I feel those things in my body, I'm like, oh, like this is what anger feels like. And I just try to lean into it, experience it. Uh, don't try to push it away or push it down. Just let it happen. And then if I acknowledge it, it lasts less length of time than if I'm like, no, 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 don't feel that. And then it rears up again. Oh, push it down. Like So if I push it down or try to uh, manipulate it in some way, it keeps coming back. And if I just go, okay, this is what we're going through right now, uh, it seems to go away quicker. Yeah. A, a number of years ago, it was January 20th and it was 2018. So this year will be two years. Uh, and I'll just share this with you. I, I haven't shared this before. I made a phone call uh, one night when I had been drinking. And I sent some text messages one night when I was drinking to someone that I really loved and cared about. They say that you love three people in your lifetime, and this is certainly uh, someone that I loved in that way. And I woke up the next day, and this person told me about the phone calls I had made, what I had said. And then they wrote me a beautiful letter. They wrote me a beautiful letter and just said, you know what? You need to explore your relationship with drinking. You need to explore your relationship uh, with alcohol. And the other thing that they did is they forgave me full stop. Just forgave me. And that's when I decided that I would go on this journey. Uh, this journey for almost the last two years of not drinking. In that journey, I have failed four times. I have drank four times. Um, not for days or weeks on end, but I've drank. I've failed four times. But more often than not, um, there's many days where I have prevailed in the last two years on that journey. But they say that when it comes to recovering, it's not a straight line. And uh, it hasn't always been a straight line for me. It's been hard. It's been tough. And at times, uh, a very lonely, a very lonely journey, but a very fulfilling journey because then you get to show up and be present. Two Saturdays ago, I got a phone call 11.07 at night. And it was from this person that forgave me two years ago. And it was from this person and someone that they're currently dating. And they were inebriated and they called me. What happened in that phone call, the things that were said, the things that were texted to me, uh, and I had not been drinking that night, uh, were painful. And I'm not going to share what was said, um, but it was very, very painful and it was very, very hard. And I was very, very sad. And I didn't sleep that night. I didn't sleep for a number of days. And then my sadness turned into real anger. Really angry. So angry. As angry as I have ever been. And I went and I talked to uh, one of my mentors that has helped me throughout the past couple of years. And we talked about the anger and we talked about feeling that anger and that it's okay to feel anger. It's okay to be angry. But if you stay tethered to that anger, it will destroy you, is what he told me. And I could begin to feel that as I was mourning the loss of my sister and Stanley last year and begin to feel sorry for myself and then this, this phone call. And then he asked me, he's like, have you ever made a phone call like that? I'm like, yeah, you know I made a phone call like that. A phone call I don't remember two years ago. And he said, what happened as a result of that? I said, some really great things that sent me on a great journey. 
And he told me this, and I'll never forget this. He said, sometimes the things that cause you the most pain, when you lean into those, they, they end up changing you the most. I used to do this little run every day around Discovery Park and here in Seattle, and there's a lookout point, a fire lookout point, and I stop there daily, and I sit on this bench, and I say a prayer. And I recommit that today... I am not going to drink. Today, I'm going to be the best damn father that I can be. I'm going to be the best human that I can be. Be the best brother, the best son, the best partner, best dog owner that I can be. And I leave things there on that bench. My relationship with my father over the years, I have left that there on the bench. The pain that I've felt as a result of my little sister dying, I leave on that bench. Sometimes I listen to her music when I sit on that bench. And I leave it there. And this phone call, and these text messages, I had to go leave on that bench. And it's not easy because sometimes you leave something on a bench and then you go get in the car and it follows you. It's tethered to you. And you know what I'm learning? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is really about ourselves. And what's really hard is when the other side doesn't ask for forgiveness and you still have to forgive. You feel betrayed and you still have to forgive. Even if they don't ask. Because I don't want to take that bitterness and betrayal and disappointment into 2020. This morning I sat down. We were in a, a meeting the other day with a, a group of folks at Windermere. And we went around the table and we talked about our morning routines and the things that we do. And there's a young man by the name of Corey that was there. And I asked Corey, I said, Corey, what do you do every morning? He said, you know what? I sit down and I write down the three things that I'm most grateful for. And I did that the other day. I wrote down the three things, just like Corey, I was most grateful for. And I wrote down the names of these people that call me. And I chose in that moment that I am going to walk in forgiveness and that I'm going to be grateful for them and grateful for that phone call in the same way I'm grateful for the phone call that I made two years ago because it set me on a different path of becoming the man and the human that I want to be. I'm not going to allow this anger to control me or take this into 2020. I'm just not. I'm going to leave it on that bench in Discovery Park. A couple things I read to myself when I sit on that bench. And one of the things I'll share with you now is that when it comes to forgiveness, when we forgive, when we forgive each other, when we forgive people that we feel like have betrayed us, we forgive family members. And you probably had to do that during the holidays as you sat down with family members that sometimes, even though you're 40 now, they can take you right back to being nine years old. Forgiveness is something that allows us to step into the present and not be anchored to the past. I'm going to head into 2020 with forgiveness in my heart. I'm going to head into 2020 and ask myself, what was my part in that? What was my part in that phone call two years ago? And what was my part in that phone call two weeks ago? And you know what you find out? You have a part. I'm not going to worry about what's on their side of the street because I need to clean my own side of the street. And in doing so, I'm going to forgive myself and forgive them and not be tethered to the pain and to the anger and to really release it and let it go as we head into 2020. I hope you got a spot. hope you got a place where you can go, sit, 
And that as we head into 2020 and this new decade, that you're becoming the human that you want to become. And a lot of times it's about forgiving and letting go and not being anchored to the past. And forgiving yourself for a phone call that you made two years ago that you're not super proud of. And a phone call that you received two weeks ago. And thanking God that in that moment when you got that phone call two weeks ago that you were sober. And that you were able to handle that. And I have to say, I handled it beautifully. I did. You don't have to be anchored to it. Let it go. It's the Ron and Don Show. Only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. You should buy a shirt. It's the Ron and Don Nation t-shirt. Five dollars goes toward helping kids. It's cops helping kids. Find out more at ronanddon.com. All right, it's the Ron and Don Show. Only at ronanddon.com. Thanks to tens of thousands of people that are listening to the podcast. This is podcast number 10. We really appreciate you. And a lot of people ask us, uh, what happened to you guys used to be on the radio? That's uh, podcast number one. If you want to check that out, hit the subscribe button. Also, uh, rate us, give us a star, a thumbs up, anything. Yeah, right. most of our actions coming from the Apple Podcast Player. So if you rate us, uh, give us a star rating on there, we'd really appreciate it. That helps the algorithm uh, get the show out. I need your help here, and this is legit. Yeah. So I'm a little bit freaked out about this. You you know there are two things about me, uh, especially if you listen to us for a long time. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's two. Th- there's two things. In the, the, I know a lot very, of things You know a lot about of things you. about me. There's only two things about you? But no, these are two things can that I, would be apparent. Can I guess them? Sure. Okay, let's see. You have soft hands. Okay, that's one thing. And your hands sweat a lot. All right. The, in addition to those two things, okay. you know that I, I, I enjoy some creature, creature comforts. Yes. And I'm very cheap. Like, yes. So those two things a lot of times do not go hand you in know, hand. You know what, though? You used to be cheap, and then and then you disguised it. and You disguise it now as being frugal. But right. it's still cheap. You could, and you learn that from your mother, Alice. Of course. Your mother is cheap, but, but I've she disguises better. it as being frugal. I'm, I'm selectively cheap now. You know what, so uh, when I go out to eat or something, I'll tip and I, yeah. I will treat friends and that sort of thing. You're very kind to me. You're kind to my dog, Charlie. You're kind to my son. You're, you're, you, but you, I'm cheap in other things. You, you surely are, yes. So I've been I've been wanting a massage. I'd, I'd, I'd worked a bunch of days in a row. I was like, oh, this, this would be a nice stress reliever. You want a what? A massage. What do you need a massage for? Uh, it just felt like one. You have a real estate job. I know. All you do is ride around in the car and talk, on your, talk on your cell phone. Yeah, that's all I'm Doing. You walk in and out of homes. You take your shoes on. You take your shoes off. Right. It's, it's a very shoes, tough job. Shoes going on and off. Is that really yes, bothering it's you? Really been you giving putting me up little signs exactly. at open houses. Okay. So I'm like, uh, I want to do the massage. I'm like, ah man, the a regular massage is like a hundred, hundred and ten bucks, and you got a tip on that. Yeah, what kind of massage are you wanting? And so, well, here's the thing. So I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want the full massage. So a friend of mine was like, oh, if you tried reflexology, mm. and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And they oh. go. Well, reflexology, it's its almost as good as a regular massage, yeah. but it's half the price. And I'm like, really? Tell me more. And they go, well, you go in and they do a couple of things that are not standard in the regular massage thing, but it's like 50 bucks. And I'm like, all right, I'll give this a try. So I find, uh, I do a little uh, Google search. I find a reflexology uh, down here in, in uh, Burien, White Center, West oh, Seattle no. area. And so I, I go in. So I go in, and uh, the guys uh, uh, greets me at the front, to the counter. Did you say grease me? Get greet. He greets oh, me. Greets you. Greets me. I'm he, like, uh, wow, they start greasing you at the front no. counter. You should probably get out. He of there, greets right? me, and I was like, yeah, I'd like to do. They have a little uh, leaderboard or a placard. You know, uh, 45 minutes is this much. Uh, one hour, an hour and a half. There was like the little menu of services. Yeah. And I said, uh, can I get the hour long massage? I think it was fifty dollars. I'm like, this is a great deal. It's half price. That is half price. Wow. And I'm I'm getting almost the same thing. Like what, there, there's no downside here. So um, he says something. Something yeah. in a different language, and a woman then walks out and basically escorts me into the back area. Okay. And so I go in there, and again, this is my first time okay. at reflexology. Yeah. And so, and I don't know, it's in like a strip mall, which there's been, I've been to like some other chain massage places that were in strip malls, so no big deal there. And so I go in the back. And normally you break off into rooms, right? Like every room has its own little table. I don't know. You go off into a room and no. then you get your massage. This thing, there's 10 
low slung tables in a row, one room. Hmm. Everybody's in the same room. Yeah. So I'm sort of like, ah, this is a little weird. But I'm already back there. Yeah. She uh, English is her second language as well, mm-hmm. and so she sort of motions me to one of these tables that are like knee high. Right, it looks sort of like a regular massage table. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? What the heck? I'm saving fifty percent. Uh, I really could use this. Then you looked around, you saw some people you know. You're like, hey, there's Patriot owner Robert Kraft over sure. there. What's this up, is the, Bob? Yeah, this is the place. And so um, I, I lay down there, and um, so she tells me to take my shirt off, and there's a there's a a woman like two tables over, and she's in, in mid uh, reflexology. Right? What, what two, does that mean? I, is it, her shirt off too? Uh, she's got a towel on over the, the top oh, part. Wow. So I take my shirt off. I'm like, what the heck? It's kind of dark back here. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Uh, and then they bring out this bucket of warm water and they put my feet in the bucket. Mm. That's something you don't have normally at a regular massage. Do, do, that's normally not happening. So the feet are soaking. Yeah. I'm now laying down. They put some uh, like towels over me, and so she starts to get to work. And I'm like, okay, well, this is like the foot soak thing. Mm. I can deal with that. You know, the fact that there's a person a couple feet away, I, I you know, I'm saving fifty bucks. Right. Um, this is half price. That's right. So now that some stuff's going on, uh, you know, kind of quasi normal um, massage things. Then it takes a little bit of a left turn on me, and I'm wondering if I'm in a place and I'm in way over my head. Real quick, is your front door open? I don't know. I, I think I closed it. You did? Yeah, why? Well, because I'm wondering if Charlie's... No, Charlie's right down next oh, okay. to me. He's sleeping. All right. Charlie the dog. He's sleeping? Well, he's right down on the floor. Don't say anything. He's laying down. He's being good. Oh. He's not chewing the carpet. He's not uh, breaking anything. <laughs> wow. So uh, so then she, she starts doing some moves that I've never had done before in a massage. She grabs one of my arms and pulls it straight up over my head mm. and then starts moving it around vigorously. What does that do? And at the same time, like, sort of slapping me. It's like, <laughs> quack, 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 quack. And I'm like, okay, this is new. This is different. Never had this before. <laughs> then she takes my foot out of the water bath, yeah. wipes that down, and starts doing the thing with my leg. Wow. Moving the leg around, yeah. smacking the back of my leg. There's some moves that I'm like, okay, I don't know, I don't know what this is. Yeah. So I'm still sort of going, okay, there's enough good stuff going on here that I feel like I'm still getting half price. Sure. So then, and I need to be interrupt me if this doesn't make sense, oh. and I'm trying to figure out what was going on. She now comes around. So my head is on the facing, my head's on the end of the bed. I'm closing my eyes uh, because I'm trying to enjoy the massage. She does a little bit of like shoulder work, which is standard. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, and how do I explain it? So the thing, it's low slung. It's like a a knee high situation. The the table is not table height. It's like knee height. So now, and I, let me grab my phone because I wrote this down. I wanted to say it exactly as I heard it, and you tell me what's going on. Wow. Because I was like, this, I don't know if I understand this. She, I wasn't expecting, we weren't chit-chatty. English is her second language. This is my first reflexology. We're not chit-chatting. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I feel her face down by my ear, and I'm not going to try to to mimic the, the accent because I don't know what the accent was, very thick accent. So it's unclear what she said. She either said... You like hot candy. <laughs> or it might have been it might have been you are hot candy. So it was either it was either you like hot candy or you are hot candy. Oh man. And then it got weird. It did. Yeah. Do we have time to get into the yeah. weird part? Yeah, what happened? Okay, so now she flips me over face down. Yeah. Uh, and she just had said you like hot candy. Mm. Now she gets uh, and again, people email me or let me know what's going on here, because I may have been in a way over my head. She now puts one knee on either side of my head, on my ears. Wow. Left knee on one ear, right knee on the other ear. She is straddling my head. Whoa. And then she goes into like some back maneuvers that are a combination of vigorous rubs yeah. with the slaps. Wow. In the hot candy. In the hot candy. So, and this goes on for a while. Wow. I got the head straddle back slap hmm. and i'm like am i is she waiting for me to do something i've never been in this position 
literally or figuratively before I don't know so if this So you is, think she's sending you a signal right. about some kind of sexual act is what you're I'm thinking. going is is am I do am I supposed to know what the hot candy means yeah. in like this pose is a precursor to the hot candy or am I the hot candy yeah. and like this is standard issue I, I'm very confused. Well, so I just froze. You should ask Robert Kraft to do <laughs> Okay, Bob. Yeah. Am I the hot candy? Right, he's good. Or is she the hot candy? He's been caught in a few of those. Uh, so I just kind of froze okay. because there have been some high-profile hot candy situations that have happened in the Seattle area recently. There have been. And so I just, hands to the side, <laughs> no hot candy for me. I don't want any part of the hot candy. And so... Stay away from the hot candy. Eventually she... Do not touch the hot candy. Eventually she dismounted the table. Wow. And I put my shoes and socks back on and sure went out and paid and tipped and was like, other than that, yeah. it was about a half price massage. So I just... Oh. Please hit me on my Facebook yeah. or in the Anchor app. You can leave a voicemail. What is the hot candy? Yeah. And, and, and did I do anything illegal? Because I don't know. Did you enjoy getting slapped around? That part was a little weird. Yeah. A little bit weird, I got to say. It's the Ron and Don Show, only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. All right, you guys, there you go. Uh, now that everyone's had some hot candy. <laughs> Please don't, you know, <laughs> don't go in and request the hot candy. That's a, it usually ends in a sting operation. Yeah, here we head into uh, 2020. We just want to thank you so much for listening to us, uh, for believing in us, uh, for reaching out to us, and for loving us. Thank you so much for doing that. And we have felt your support, your love, your care, your concern, your compassion all year long. And we thank you for that. And we are grateful and have much gratitude for you. All right. You keep your head up, your shoulders back. Here comes 2020. And here comes Ron and Don in 2020. And here comes you. All right. So let's get ready for a little more you. We'll see you next time. It's the Ron and Don Show. And why wouldn't you be listening on the Ron and Don Radio Network?